Brought to you by Wikivd.com Eurofighter Typhoon The Eurofighter Typhoon is a twin-engine canard delta-wing multi-role fighter. The Typhoon was designed originally as an air superiority fighter and is manufactured by a consortium of Alenia Air Mac Airbus and Bay Systems that conducts the majority of the project through a joint holding company. Eurofighter Jags Flugs UGMBH formed in 1986. NATO Eurofighter and Tornado Management Agency manages the project and is the prime customer. The aircraft's development effectively began in 1983, with the future European Fighter Aircraft Programme a multinational collaboration among the UK, Germany, France, Italy and Spain. Disagreements over design authority and operational requirements led France to leave the consortium to develop the Dassault Raffle independently, a technology demonstration aircraft. The British Aerospace EAP first took flight on 6 August 1986. The first prototype of the finalized Eurofighter made its first flight on 27 March 1994. The aircraft's name Typhoon was adopted in September 1998. The first production contracts were also signed that year. Political issues in the partner nations significantly protracted the Typhoon's development. The sudden end of the Cold War reduced European demand for fighter aircraft and debate existed over the aircraft's cost and work share. The Typhoon entered operational service in 2003. It has entered service with the air forces of Austria, Italy, Germany, the United Kingdom, Spain and Saudi Arabia. The air forces of Oman and Kuwait are export customers, bringing the procurement total to 599 aircraft. The Eurofighter Typhoon is a highly agile aircraft designed to be a supremely effective dogfighter in combat. Later production aircraft have been increasingly better equipped to undertake air-to-surface strike missions and to be compatible with an increasing number of different armaments and equipment including Storm Shadow and the RAF Brimstone. The Typhoon had its combat debut during the 2011 military intervention in Libya with the UK's Royal Air Force and the Italian Air Force performing aerial reconnaissance and ground strike missions. The type has also taken primary responsibility for air defense duties for the majority of customer nations. Origins The UK had identified a requirement for a new fighter as early as 1971. The AST-403 specification issued by the Air Staff in 1972 led to the P.96 conventional tailed design presented in the late 1970s, while the design would have met the Air Staff's requirements. The UK air industry had reservations as it appeared to be very similar to the McDonnell Douglas FA-18 Hornet which was then well advanced in its development. The P.96 design had little potential for growth and when it entered production, it would secure few exports in a market in which the Hornet would be well established. However, the simultaneous West German requirement for a new fighter had led by 1979 to the development of the TKF-90 concept. This was a crank delta wing design, with forward close-coupled canard controls and artificial stability. Although the British aerospace designers rejected some of its advanced features such as engine, Vectoring nozzles and vented trailing edge controls a form of boundary layer control they agreed with the overall configuration. In 1979 Messerschmitt Bolker Blohm and British Aerospace presented a formal proposal to their respective governments for the ECF. The European Collaborative Fighter A European Combat Fighter In October 1979 Dassault joined the ECF team for a tri-national study, which became known as the European Combat Aircraft. It was, at this stage of development the Eurofighter name was first attached to the aircraft. 
the development of different national prototypes continued. France produced the ACX. The UK produced two designs, the P.106 was a single-engined, lightweight fighter, superficially resembling the Jazz 39 grip in the P.110 was a twin-engined fighter. The RAF rejected the P.106 concept on the grounds it had half the effectiveness of the two-engined aircraft at two-thirds of the cost. West Germany continued to refine the TKF-90 concept. The ECA project collapsed in 1981, for several reasons including differing requirements, Dassault's insistence on design leadership, and the British preference for a new version of the RB-199 to power the aircraft versus the French preference for the new Snecmar M88. Consequently, the Panavia partners launched the Agile Combat Aircraft Program in April 1982. The ACA was very similar to the Bay P.110 having a crank delta wing canards and a twin tail. One major external difference was the replacement of the side-mounted engine intakes with a chin intake. The ACA was to be powered by a modified version of the RB199. The German and Italian governments withdrew funding and the UK Ministry of Defence agreed to fund 50% of the cost with the remaining 50% to be provided by industry. MBB and Air Italia signed up with the aim of producing two aircraft, one at Wharton and one by MBB. In May 1983 Bay announced a contract with the MOD for the development and production of an ACA demonstrator the experimental aircraft program. In 1983 Italy, Germany, France, the UK and Spain launched the future European fighter aircraft program. The aircraft was to have short takeoff and landing and beyond visual range capabilities. In 1984 France reiterated its requirement for a carrier-capable version and demanded a leading role. Italy, West Germany and the UK opted out and established a new EFA program. In Turin on 2 August 1985 West Germany, the UK and Italy agreed to go ahead with the Eurofighter and confirmed France along with Spain had chosen not to proceed as a member of the project. Despite pressure from France, Spain rejoined the Eurofighter project in early September 1985. France officially withdrew from the project to pursue its own ACX project which was to become the Dassault Rafale. By 1986, the program's cost had reached £180 million. When the EAP program had started, the cost was supposed to be equally shared by government and industry but the West German and Italian governments wavered on the agreement and the three main industrial partners had to provide £100 million to keep the program from ending. In April 1986, the Bay EAP was rolled out at Bay Wharton by this time also partially funded by MBB Bay and Air Italia. The EAP first flew on 6 August 1986. The Eurofighter bears a strong resemblance to the EAP. Design work continued over the next five years using data from the EAP. Initial requirements were UK, 250 aircraft Germany, 250 Italy, 165 and Spain, 100. The share of the production work was divided among the countries in proportion to their projected procurement DASA British Aerospace Air Italia, and Construcci owns Aeronautica's SA. The Munich-based Eurofighter Jags Flugzeug GmbH was established in 1986 to manage development of the project and Eurojet Turbo GmbH the alliance of Rolls-Royce. MTU Aero Engines Fiat Avio and ITP for development of the EJ200. The aircraft was known as Eurofighter EFA from the late 1980s until it was renamed F2000 in 1992. 
By 1990, the selection of the aircraft's radar had become a major stumbling block. The UK, Italy, and Spain supported the Ferranti defence systems led ECR-90, while Germany preferred the APG-65-based MSD-2000. An agreement was reached after UK Defence Secretary Tom King assured his West German counterpart, Gerhard Stoltenberg, that the British government would approve the project and allow the GEC subsidiary Marconi Electronic Systems to acquire Ferranti Defence Systems from its parent the Ferranti Group, which was in financial and legal difficulties. GEC thus withdrew its support for the MSD-2000. Delays The financial burdens placed on Germany by reunification caused Helmut Kohl to make an election promise to cancel the Eurofighter. In early to mid-1991 German Defence Minister Volker Ruhr sought to withdraw Germany from the project in favour of using Eurofighter technology in a cheaper lighter plane. Because of the amount of money already spent on development, the number of jobs dependent on the project and the binding commitments on each partner government, Helmut Kohl was unable to withdraw. Ruhr's predecessors had locked themselves into the project by a punitive penalty system of their own devising. In 1995 concerns over workshare appeared. Since the formation of Eurofighter, the workshare split had been agreed, at 33 33rds, 21 based on the number of units being ordered by each contributing nation. All the nations then reduced their orders. The UK cut its orders from 250 to 232, Germany from 250 to 140 Italy from 165 to 121 and Spain from 100 to 87. According to these order levels the work share split should have been 39 24 22 15 UK, Germany, Italy, Spain. However Germany was unwilling to give up such a large amount of work. In January 1996, after much negotiation between German and UK partners, a compromise was reached whereby Germany would purchase another 40 aircraft. The work share split was 43% for EADS mass in Germany and Spain, 37.5% Bay Systems in the UK, and 19.5% for Alenia in Italy. The next major milestone came, at the Farnborough Air Show in September 1996. The UK announced the funding for the construction phase of the project. In November 1996 Spain confirmed its order, but Germany delayed its decision. After much diplomatic activity between Germany and the UK, an interim funding arrangement of 100 million German marks was contributed by the German government in July 1997 to continue flight trials. Further negotiations finally resulted in Germany's approval to purchase the Eurofighter in October 1997. Testing The maiden flight of the Eurofighter prototype took place in Bavaria on 27 March 1994 flown by DAS chief test pilot Peter Wieger. On 9 December 2004, Eurofighter Typhoon IPA-4 began three months of cold environmental trials at the Vidsal Air Base in Sweden the purpose of which was to verify the operational behavior of the aircraft and its systems in temperatures between minus 25 and 31 degrees Celsius. The maiden flight of instrumented production aircraft 7 the first fully equipped Tranche 2 aircraft took place from Eads, Manching Airfield on 16 January 2008. Procurement production and costs The first production contract was signed on 30 January 1998 between Eurofighter GmbH Eurojet and NETMA. 
The procurement totals were as follows. The UK 232, Germany 180, Italy 121, and Spain 87. Production was again allotted according to procurement. British Aerospace Darsa Air Italia and CASA. On 2 September 1998 a naming ceremony was held at Farnborough, United Kingdom. This saw the Typhoon name formally adopted initially for export aircraft only. The name continues the storm theme started by the Panavia tornado. This was reportedly resisted by Germany perhaps because the Hawker Typhoon was a fighter-bomber aircraft used by the RAF. During the Second World War II attack German targets, the name Spitfire II, had also been considered and rejected for the same reason early in the development program. In September 1998 contracts were signed for production of 148 Tranche 1 aircraft and procurement of long lead time items for Tranche 2 aircraft. In March 2008, the final aircraft out of Tranche 1 was delivered to the German Air Force, with all successive deliveries being at the Tranche 2 standard. On 21 October 2008, the first two of 91 Tranche 2 aircraft ordered four years before were delivered to RAF Coningsby. In October 2008, the Eurofighter nations were considering splitting the 236 fighter tranche 3 into two parts. In June 2009, RAF Air Chief Marshal Sir Glenn Torpy suggested that the RAF fleet could be 123 jets instead of the 232 previously planned. In spite of this reduction in required aircraft, on 14 May 2009 British Prime Minister Gordon Brown confirmed the UK would move ahead with the third batch purchase. A contract for the first part tranche 3A was signed at the end of July 2009 for 112 aircraft split across the four partner nations including 40 aircraft for the UK, 31 for Germany, 21 for Italy and 20 for Spain. These 40 aircraft were said to have fully covered the UK's obligations in the project by Air Commodore Chris Bushell because of cost overruns in the project. The Eurofighter Typhoon is unique in modern combat aircraft in that there are four separate assembly lines. Each partner company assembles its own national aircraft but builds the same parts for all aircraft. Premium AEROTECE aids CASA Bay Systems Canopy Dorsal Spine Tail Fin Inboard Flaperons Rear Fuselage Section and Leonardo. Production is divided into three tranches. Tranches are a production, funding distinction, and do not imply an incremental increase in capability with each tranche. Tranche 3 are based on late Tranche 2 aircraft with improvements added. Tranche 3 was split into A and B parts. Tranches were further divided up into production standard capability blocks and funding procurement batches though these did not coincide and are not the same thing and more the Eurofighter designated FGR-4 by the RAF is a Tranche 1 Block 5. Batch 1 covered Block 1 but Batch 2 covered Blocks 2, 2 being 5. On 25 May 2011 the 100th production aircraft ZK-315 rolled off the production line at Wharton. In 1988 the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for the armed forces told the UK House of Commons that the European fighter aircraft would be a major project costing the United Kingdom about £7 billion. It was soon apparent a more realistic estimate was £13 billion, made up of £3.3 billion development costs plus £30 million per aircraft. By 1997 the estimated cost was £17 billion, by 2003 £20 billion, and the in-service date was 54 months late. After 2003 the Ministry of Defence refused to release updated cost estimates on the grounds of commercial sensitivity. 
However, in 2011, the National Audit Office estimated the UK's assessment development production and upgrade costs eventually hit £22.9 billion and total programme costs would reach £37 billion. By 2007 Germany estimated the system cost at €120 million Euros and said it was in perpetual increase. On 17 June 2009 Germany ordered 31 aircraft of tranche 3A for €2,800 million Euros leading to a system cost of €90 million Euros per aircraft. The UK's Committee of Public Accounts reported that the mismanagement of the project had helped increase the cost of each aircraft by 75%. Defence Secretary Liam Fox responded that, I am determined that in the future such projects are properly run from the outset and I have announced reforms to reduce equipment delays and cost overruns. The Spanish mod put the cost of their Typhoon project up to December 2010 at €11.718 billion Euros up from an original €9.255 billion Euros and implying a system cost for their 73 aircraft of €160 million. Euros. On the 11th of September 2008 the combined flying time of the five customer air forces and the industrial flight test program saw the aircraft pass the 50,000 flight hours milestone. On 31 March 2009 a Eurofighter Typhoon fired an AMRAAM whilst having its radar in passive mode. For the first time, the necessary target data for the missile was acquired by the radar of a second Eurofighter Typhoon, and transmitted using the Multifunctional Information Distribution System. In January 2011, the entire Typhoon fleet had passed the 100,000 flying hours mark. In September 2013, the worldwide Eurofighter fleet achieved over 200,000 flight hours. As of July 2016, a total of 599 orders had been received with 478 delivered. In July 2016, the 10-year Typhoon Total Availability Enterprise support deal between the RAF and industry partners Bay Systems and Leonardo was announced that aims to reduce the Typhoon's per-hour operating cost by 30-40%. This should equate to a saving of at least £550 million which will be recycled into the program according to base systems military air, with the eventually result in the Typhoon having a per-hour operating cost equivalent to AF-16. Upgrades in 2000 the UK selected the MBDA Meteor as the long-range air-to-air missile armament for her typhoons with an in-service date of December 2011. In December 2002 France, Germany, Spain, and Sweden joined the British in a $1.9 billion contract for Meteor on Typhoon the Dassault Raffle and the Saab Gripen. The protracted contract negotiations pushed the ISD to August 2012 and it was further put back by Eurofighter's failure to make trials aircraft available to the Meteor partners. Meteor is now in production and first deliveries to the RAF were scheduled for Q4 2012 but full clearance on Typhoon was not planned until mid-2016. While the Meteor may have been delivered it will not enter service before 2017. In 2014 the Second element of the Phase 1 enhancements package known as P1EB was announced allowing Typhoon to realize both its air-to-air -air and air-to-ground capability to full effect. Budgetary pressures being encountered by the four original partner nations have limited upgrades, none of the partner nations have confirmed an order for tranche 3Bs which would have been optimized for future higher tempo air-to-air -air and strike operations and Germany has cut its own orders short to avoid the model. Furthermore, the four original partner nations have proved reluctant to collectively fund enhancements that extend the aircraft's air-to-ground capability. 
such as integration of the MBDA Storm Shadow cruise missile. However, the United Kingdom's Royal Air Force has an enhancement program that aims to integrate the MBDA Storm Shadow cruise missile, the MBDA Brimstone air-to-surface missile, and the Meteor Beyond Visual Range air-to-air missile into its Eurofighter Typhoon force. This program is known as Project Centurion and has set a target of December 2018 to seamlessly integrate the weapons and capability of the Panavia Tornado GR4 before the tornadoes go out of service in 2019. In October 2016, Bay Systems confirmed that the first phase of Project Centurion's package of enhancements had entered the operational evaluation stage. In April 2017, Bay Systems announced six successful firings by the Typhoon in 2016, including a simultaneous firing of two Meteor missiles. Training with Meteor is now due to take place with the UK Royal Air Force later in 2017. Tranche 3 aircraft ESM, ECM enhancements have been focused on improving radiating jamming power with antenna modifications while Eurodas is reported to offer a range of new capabilities, including the addition of a digital receiver extending band coverage to low frequencies and introducing an interferometric receiver with extremely precise geolocation functionalities. On the jamming side Eurodas is looking to low-band jamming more capable antennae. New ECM techniques while protection against missile is to be enhanced through a new passive MWS in addition to the active devices already on board the aircraft. The latest support for self-protection will however originate from the new AESA radar which is to replace the captor system providing in a spiraled program with passive active and cyber warfare RF capabilities. Cell XS has developed a self-contained expendable digital radio frequency memory jammer for fast jet aircraft known as the Bright Cloud which was expected to be available on the market. By mid-2014, it will provide an off-board capability to decoy RF-guided missile seekers and fire control radars producing large misdistance and angle brake lock thanks to self-contained coherent technique generation processing and high-power batteries that allow at least 10 seconds of life after firing activation in addition to rapid response capabilities dispensed in the initial format from standard 55mm flare cartridge to equip at least three main platforms. Eurojet is attempting to find funding to test a thrust vectoring nozzle on a flight demonstrator. Additionally, the RAF has sought to develop conformal fuel tanks for their Typhoons to free up underwing space for weapons. An all tranche 3 aircraft are fitted to accept these tanks. On the 22nd of April 2014, Bay Systems announced a new round of wind tunnel tests to assess the aerodynamic characteristics of conformal fuel tanks. The CFTs, which can be fitted to any tranche two thirds aircraft and carry 1,500 liters each to increase the Typhoon's combat radius by a factor of 25% to 1,500 N miles. Bay Systems has completed development of its Striker 2 helmet-mounted display that builds on the capabilities of the original Striker helmet-mounted display, which is already in service on the Typhoon. Striker 2 features a new display with more color and can transition between day and night seamlessly eliminating the need for separate night vision googles. In addition, the helmet can monitor the pilot's exact head position so it always knows exactly what information to display. The system is compatible with ANR a 3D audio threat system and 3D communications. These are available as customer options. In 2015 Bay Systems was awarded a £1.7 million contract 
to study the feasibility of a common weapon launcher that could be capable of carrying multiple weapons and weapon types on a single pylon. Also in 2015, Airbus Flight tested a package of aerodynamic upgrades for the Eurofighter known as the Aerodynamic Modification Kit that included fuselage strakes and leading edge route extensions which increases wing lift by 25% resulting in an increased turn rate, tighter turning radius, and improved nose pointing ability at low speed with angle of attack values around 45% greater than on the standard aircraft and roll rates up to 100% higher. Eurofighter's Laurie Hilditch said these improvements should increase subsonic turn rate by 15% and give the Eurofighter the sort of knife fight in a phone box turning capability enjoyed by rivals such as Boeing's F-A-18E, F of the Lockheed Martin F-16 without sacrificing the transonic and supersonic high-energy agility inherent to its Delta Wing canard configuration. In April 2016, Finn Mechanica demonstrated the air-to-ground capabilities of its Mode 5 reverse identification. Friend foe system integrated on an Italian Air Force Tranche 1 Eurofighter Typhoon. This demonstration shows that it is possible to give pilots the ability to distinguish between friendly and enemy platforms in a simple, low-impact fashion using the aircraft's existing transponder. Finn Mechanica says NATO is considering the system as a short to mid-term solution for air-to-surface identification of friendly forces and thus avoid collateral damage as due to friendly fire during close air support operations. Airframe Overview The Typhoon is a highly agile aircraft at both supersonic and low speeds achieved through having an intentionally relaxed stability design. It has a quadruplex digital fly-by-wire control system providing artificial stability, as manual operation alone could not compensate for the inherent instability. The fly-by-wire system is described as carefree and prevents the pilot from exceeding the permitted maneuver envelope. Roll control is primarily achieved by use of the wing 11s. Pitch control is by operation of the four planes and 11s. The York control is by rudder. Control surfaces are moved through two independent hydraulic systems, which also supply various other items such as the canopy brakes and undercarriage, powered by a 4000 psi engine-driven gearbox. Engines are fed by a chin double intake ramp situated below a splitter plate. The Typhoon features lightweight construction with an estimated lifespan of 6,000 flying hours. The permitted lifespan as opposed to the estimated lifespan was 3,000 hours. Radar signature reduction features Although not designated as stealth fighter measures were taken, to reduce the Typhoon's radar cross-section especially from the frontal aspect. An example of these measures is that the Typhoon has jet inlets that conceal the front of the jet engine from radar. Many important potential radar targets such as the wing canard and fin leading edges are highly swept so will reflect radar energy well away from the front sector. Some external weapons are mounted semi-recessed into the aircraft, partially shielding these missiles from incoming radar waves. In addition, radar absorbent materials developed primarily by Eads, DASA, coat many of the most significant reflectors such as the wing leading edges, the intake edges, and interior the rudder surrounds and strakes. The manufacturers have carried out tests on the early Eurofighter prototypes to optimize the low observability characteristics of the aircraft from the early 1990s. Testing at BAE's Wharton facility on the DA-4 prototype measured the RCS of the aircraft and investigated the effects of a variety of ram coatings and composites. Another measure to reduce the likelihood of discovery is the use of passive sensors. 
which minimizes the radiation of treacherous electronic emissions. While canards generally have poor stealth characteristics, the flight control system is designed to maintain the elevon trim and canards at an angle at which they have the smallest RCS cockpit. The Typhoon features a glass cockpit without any conventional instruments. It incorporates three full-color multifunction head-down displays command, a wide-angle head-up display with forward-looking infrared a voice and hands-on throttle, and stick the helmet-mounted symbology system a multifunctional information distribution system. A manual data entry facility located on the left glare shield, and fully integrated aircraft warning system with a dedicated warnings panel. Reversionary flying instruments lit by LEDs are located under a hinged right glare shield. Access to the cockpit is normally via either a telescopic integral ladder or an external version. The integral ladder is stowed in the port side of the fuselage below the cockpit. User needs were given a high priority in the cockpit's design, both layout and functionality was created through feedback and assessments from military pilots and a specialist testing facility. The aircraft is controlled by means of a center stick and left-hand throttles designed on a hand-on throttle and stick principle to lower pilot workloads. Emergency escape is provided by a Martin Baker MK-16A ejection seat, with the canopy being jettisoned by two rocket motors. The HMSS was delayed by years, but should have been operational by late 2011. Standard G-force protection is provided by the full-cover anti-G trousers, a specially developed G-suit providing sustained protection up to 9 grams. German Air Force and Austrian Air Force pilots wear a hydrostatic G-suit called Libel Multi-G Plus instead, which also provides protection to the arms theoretically giving more complete G-tolerance. In the event of pilot disorientation the flight control system allows for rapid and automatic recovery by the simple press of a button. On selection of this cockpit control the FCS takes full control of the engines and flying controls and automatically stabilizes the aircraft in a wings level gentle climbing attitude at 300 knots until the pilot is ready to retake control. The aircraft also has an automatic low-speed recovery system which prevents it from departing from controlled flight at very low speeds and high angle of attack. The FCS system is able to detect a developing low-speed situation and to raise an audible and visual low-speed cockpit warning. This gives the pilot sufficient time to react and to recover the aircraft manually. If the pilot does not react however or if the warning is ignored, the ALSR takes control of the aircraft, selects maximum dry power for the engines, and returns the aircraft to a safe flight condition. Depending on the attitude, the FCS employs an ALSR push-pull and knife-over maneuver. The Typhoon Direct Voice Input System uses a speech recognition module developed by Smith's Aerospace and Computing Devices. It was the first production DVI system used in a military cockpit. DVI provides the pilot with an additional natural mode of command and control over approximately 26 non-critical cockpit functions to reduce pilot workload improve aircraft safety and expand mission capabilities. An important step in the development of the DVI occurred in 1987, when Texas Instruments completed the TMS 320C30 a digital signal processor, enabling reductions in the size and system complexity required. The project was given the go-ahead in July 1997 with development and pilot assessment carried out on the Eurofighter Active Cockpit Simulator. At Bay Systems Wharton, the DVI system is speaker-dependent requiring each pilot 
to create a template. It is not used for safety critical or weapon critical tasks, such as weapon release or lowering of the undercarriage but is used for a wide range of cockpit functions. Voice commands are confirmed by visual or oral feedback and serves to reduce pilot workload. All functions are also achievable by means of a conventional button press or soft key selections. Functions include display management communications and management of various systems. EADS Defense and Security in Spain has worked on a new non-template DVI module to allow for continuous speech recognition speaker voice recognition with common databases and other improvements. Avionics Navigation is via both GPS and an inertial navigation system. The Typhoon can use instrument landing system for landing in poor weather. The aircraft also features an enhanced ground proximity warning system based on the TERPROM. Terrain referenced navigation system used by the Panavia Tornado. The multifunctional information distribution system provides a Link 16 data link. The aircraft employs a sophisticated and highly integrated defensive aid subsystem named Praetorian. Praetorian monitors and responds automatically to air and surface threats, provides an all round prioritized assessment and can respond to multiple threats simultaneously. Threat detection methods include a radar warning receiver, a missile warning system, and a laser warning receiver. Protective countermeasures consist of chaff flares, an electronic countermeasure suite in a towed radar decoy, the ESMECM, and MWS consists of 16 AESA antenna array assemblies and 10 ray domes. By having a single source of information pilot workload should be reduced by removing the possibility of conflicting data and the need for cross-checking, improving situational awareness and increasing systems automation. In practice the ASH should allow the Eurofighter to identify targets at distances in excess of 150 nanometers and acquire and auto-prioritize them at over 100 nanometers. In addition the ASH offers the ability to automatically control emissions from the aircraft, so called EMCON. This should aid in limiting the detectability of the typhoon, by opposing aircraft further reducing pilot workload. Capture Radar The Eurofighter operates automatic emission controls to reduce the electromagnetic emissions of the current captain mechanically scanned radar. The Captor M has three working channels, one intended for classification of jammer and for jamming suppression. A succession of radar software upgrades have enhanced the air-to-air -air capability of the Captor M radar. These upgrades have included the R2P program which is being followed by R2Q, T2Q. R2P was applied to eight German typhoons deployed on Red Flag Alaska in 2012. The Captor E is an active electronically scanned array derivative of the original Captor radar, also known as Caesar, being developed by the Euroradar consortium led by Cell XS. The German BW Plan 2009 indicated that Germany intended to equip, retrofit their Eurofighters with the AESA Captor E from 2012 but the contract award has been delayed until at least mid-2014. Synthetic Aperture Radar is expected to be fielded as part of the AESA radar upgrade which will give the Eurofighter an all-weather ground attack capability. The conversion to AESA will also give the Eurofighter a low probability of intercept radar with much better jam resistance. These include an innovative design with a gimbal to meet RAF requirements for a wider scan field than a fixed AESA. The coverage of a fixed AESA is limited to 120 degrees in azimuth and elevation. A senior EADS radar expert has claimed that Captor E is capable of detecting an F-35 from roughly 59 kilometers away.
In May 2007 Eurofighter Development Aircraft 5 made the first flight. With the Captor E demonstrator system, Tranche 2 aircraft use the non-AESA mechanically scanned Captor M which incorporates weight and space provisions for possible upgrade to Caesar standard in the future. In June 2013, Chris Bushell of CellXS warned that the failure of European nations to invest in an AESA radar was a putting export orders at risk. In November Bay responded that work on an AESA radar continued to protect exports. On the 22nd of June 2011, it was announced that the partner nations had agreed to fund development of the Captor E radar. With entry into service planned for 2015, the British are pursuing an independent technology demonstrator program called Bright Adder, which will give the Typhoon an electronic attack mode, among other things. Bright Adder is based on Kinetics Arts radar demonstrator for the Tornado GR4 and could evolve into an alternative to the main E-Scan project should E-Scan falter. The first flight of a Eurofighter equipped with a mass model of the Captory occurred in late February 2014, with flight tests of the actual radar beginning in July of that year. Tranche 3 Typhoons have the mechanical electrical and cooling enhancements needed to operate the radar. At the 2014 Farnborough Air Show, the UK mod announced that it had awarded Bay Systems a £72 million contract to conduct national-specific testing on a prototype AESA system. On 19 November 2014, the contract to upgrade to the Captor E was signed at the offices of Euroradar lead cell excess in Edinburgh in a deal worth €1 billion. Euros. Availability of the radar for Tranche 2 and 3A aircraft was anticipated by 2016-17, but there are no orders for the radar system from the partner nations. However, Kuwait became the launch customer for the Captor Reactive electronically scanned array radar in April 2016. IRST. The passive infrared airborne track equipment system is an infrared search and track system mounted on the port side of the fuselage forward of the windscreen. Cell XS is the lead contractor, which, along with Thales Optronics and Technobert of Spain, make up the EU ROFIRST consortium responsible for the system's design and development. Eurofighters starting with Tranche 1 Block 5 have the Pirate. The first Eurofighter Typhoon with Pirate IRST was delivered to the Italian Aeronautica Militare in August 2007. More advanced targeting capabilities can be provided, with the addition of a targeting pod such as the LITENING pod. Pirate operates in two IR bands. 3, 5, and 8, 11 micrometers. When used with a radar in an air to air role, it functions as an infrared search and track system providing passive target detection and tracking. In an air to surface role, it performs target identification and acquisition by supercooling the sensor. Even small variations in temperature can be detected at long range. Although no definitive ranges have been released, an upper limit of 80 nanometers has been hinted at. A more typical figure would be 30 to 50 nanometers. It also provides a navigation and landing aid. Pirate is linked to the pilot's helmet mounted display. It allows the detection of both the hot exhaust plumes of jet engines as well as surface heating caused by friction. Processing techniques further enhances the output giving a near-high resolution image of targets. The output can be directed to any of the multifunction head-down displays, and can also be overlaid on both the helmet-mounted sight and head-up display. The IIR sensor has a stabilized mount so that it can maintain a target within its field of view. Up to 200 targets can be simultaneously tracked using one of several different modes. Multiple target track, single target track, single target track, hide and sector acquisition. 
and slaved acquisition. In MTT mode the system will scan a designated volume space looking for potential targets. In STT mode Pirate will provide high precision tracking of a single designated target. In addition to this mode STT ident allows for visual identification of the target, the resolution being superior to captors. Both sector and slave acquisition demonstrate the level of sensor fusion present in the Typhoon. When in sector acquisition mode Pirate will scan a volume of space under direction of another onboard sensor such as captor. In slave acquisition offboard sensors are used, with Pirate being commanded by data obtained from an AWACS for example. When a target is found in either of these modes Pirate will automatically designate it and switch to STT. Once a target has been tracked and identified Pirate can be used to queue an appropriately equipped short-range missile i.e. a missile with a high off-bore site tracking capability such as ASRAAM. Additionally, the data can be used to augment that of capture or off-board sensor information via the ash. This should enable the Typhoon to overcome severe ECM environments and still engage its targets. Additionally, Pirate has a passive ranging capability, although the system remains limited when it comes to provide passive firing solutions as the Pirate lacks laser rangefinder engines. The Eurofighter Typhoon is fitted with two Eurojet EJ-200 engines each capable of providing up to 60 kN of dry thrust and greater than 90 kN with afterburners. The EJ-200 engine combines the leading technologies from each of the four European companies, using advanced digital control and health monitoring, wide-cord aerofoils, and single crystal turbine blades, and a convergent, divergent exhaust nozzle, to give excellent thrust-to-weight ratio multi-mission capability supercruise performance. Low fuel consumption, low cost of ownership, modular construction, and significant growth potential. The Typhoon is capable of supersonic cruise without using afterburners. Air Force's monthly gives a maximum supercruise speed of Mach 1.1. For the rough FGR4 multi roll version, however, in a Singaporean evaluation, a Typhoon managed to supercruise at Mach 1.21 on a hot day with a combat load. The Eurofighter company states that the Typhoon can supercruise at Mach 1.5. As with the F-22, the Eurofighter can launch weapons while under supercruise to extend their ranges via this running start. In 2007 the EJ-200 engine has accumulated 50,000 engine flying hours in service with the four nation air forces. In addition to the potential for increases in thrust of up to 30% the EJ-200 engine has the potential to be fitted with thrust vectoring nozzles that the Eurofighter and Eurojet consortium have been actively developing and testing primarily for export but also for future upgrades of the fleet. TVN could reduce fuel burn on a typical Typhoon mission by up to 5%, as well as increase available thrust in supercruise by up to 7% and takeoff thrust by 2%. Performance The Typhoon's combat performance compared to the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II fighters and the French Dassault Raffle has been the subject of much discussion. In March 2005, United States Air Force Chief of Staff General John P. Jumper then the only person to have flown both the Eurofighter Typhoon and the Raptor talked to Air Force print news about these two aircraft. He said in the 2005 Singapore evaluation, the Typhoon won all three combat tests including one in which a single Typhoon defeated three RSAF F-16s and reliably completed all planned flight tests. In July 2009, former Chief of Air Staff, 
For the Royal Air Force Air Chief Marshal Sir Glenn Torpy said that the Eurofighter Typhoon is an excellent aircraft. It will be the backbone of the Royal Air Force along with the JSF. In July 2007, Indian Air Force Su-30 MKI fighters participated in the Indra Dhanush exercise with Royal Air Force's Typhoon. This was the first time that the two jets had taken part in such an exercise. The IAF did not allow their pilots to use the MKI's radar during the exercise to protect the highly classified NO-11M bars. RAF Tornado pilots stated the Su-30 MKI had superior maneuverability, but the IAF pilots were also impressed by the Typhoon's agility. Armament the Typhoon is a multi-role fighter with maturing air-to-ground capabilities. The initial absence of air-to-ground capability is believed to have been a factor in the type's rejection from Singapore's fighter competition in 2005. At the time, it was claimed that Singapore was concerned about the delivery timescale and the ability of the Eurofighter partner nations to fund the required capability packages. Tranche 1 aircraft could drop laser-guided bombs in conjunction with third-party designators. But the anticipated deployment of Typhoon to Afghanistan meant that the UK required self-contained bombing capabilities before the other partners. On 20 July 2006 a £73 million deal was signed for change proposal 193 to give an austere air-to-surface capability using GBU-16 Paveway 2 and Rafael Ultra Electronics Listening 3 Laser Designator for the RAF Tranche 1 Block 5 aircraft. Aircraft with this upgrade were designated Typhoon FGR-4 by the RAF. Similar capability was added to Tranche 2 aircraft on the main development pathway as part of the Phase 1 enhancements. P1A rented service in 2013 Q1 and added the use of Paveway IVE GBU-16 and the cannon against surface targets. P1EB added full integration with GPS bombs such as GBU-10 Paveway 2 GBU-16 Paveway 2 Paveway IV and a new real-time operating system that allows multiple targets to be attacked in a single run. This new system will form the basis for future weapons integration by individual countries under the Phase 2 enhancements. The Storm Shadow and KEPD-350 cruise missiles together with the Meteor Beyond Visual Range air-to-air -air missile flight trials have been successfully completed by January 2016. The Storm Shadow and Meteor firings are part of the Phase 2 enhancement program which will introduce a range of new and improved long-range attack capabilities to Typhoon. Operational testing and evaluation of those capabilities is currently ongoing, with the Royal Air Force ahead of entry into service in 2018. In addition to Meteor and Storm Shadow the first live firing of MBDA's Brimstone air-to-surface missile. Part of the Phase 3 enhancements program was successfully completed in July 2017. An anti-shipping capability is required by 2017 and such a capability is also important for potential export customers such as India. Eurofighter is studying integrating the Boeing Harpoon or MBDA Marte or Sea Brimstone missiles onto the Typhoon for a maritime attack capability. The Typhoon can accommodate two RBS-15 or three Marte ERP under each wing, but neither has been integrated yet. In addition to the missile armament options, the Typhoon also carries a specially developed variant of the Mauser BK-27 27mm cannon armament that was developed originally for the Panavia Tornado. This is a single-barrel electrically fired gas-operated revolver cannon with a new linkerless feed system capable of firing up to 1700 rounds per minute. 
There was a proposal on cost grounds in 1999 to limit this gun armament fit to the first 53 Batch 1 aircraft destined for the RAF, only on the basis that the guns would be used as ballast and not used operationally. But this decision was reversed in 2006. Germany and Spain On 4 August 2003 Germany accepted the first series production Eurofighter. Also that year, Spain took delivery of its first series production aircraft. Italy on 16 December 2005 the Typhoon reached initial operational capability with the Italian Air Force. Its Typhoons were put into service as air defense fighters at the Grosto Air Base and immediately assigned to quick reaction alert at the same base. On 17 July 2009 Italian Air Force Typhoons were deployed to protect Albania's airspace. On 29 March 2011, Italian Air Force Eurofighter Typhoons began flying combat air patrol missions in support of NATO's Operation Unified Protector in Libya. In 2015 Italian Air Force Typhoons were deployed for about eight months in Sioli Base in northern Lithuania during the Baltic Frontier Mission. United Kingdom on 9 August 2007 the UK's Ministry of Defence reported that No. 11 Squadron RAF of the RAF, which stood up as a Typhoon Squadron on 29 March 2007, had taken delivery of its first two multi-role Typhoons. Two of 11 Squadron's Typhoons were sent to intercept a Russian Tupolev Tu-95 approaching British airspace on 17 August 2007. The RAF typhoons were declared combat ready in the air to ground roll by 1 July 2008. The RAF typhoons were projected to be ready to deploy for operations by mid-2008. In September 2009 four RAF typhoons were deployed to RAF Mount Pleasant, replacing the Tornado F-3S defending the Falkland Islands. The government of Argentina is understood to have made a formal protest. In March 2011, the UK deployed typhoons alongside Panavia Tornadoes to enforce a no-fly zone in Libya. On 20 March 10 typhoons from RAF Coningsby and RAF Lucas arrived at the Daria del Coal Air Base in southern Italy. On 21 March RAF Typhoons flew their first ever combat mission while patrolling the no-fly zone. On 29 March it was revealed that the RAF were short of pilots to fly the required number of sorties over Libya and were having to divert personnel from Typhoon training to meet the shortfall. On 12 April 2011 a mixed pair of RAF Typhoon and Tornado GR4 dropped precision-guided bombs on ground vehicles operated by Gaddafi forces that were parked in an abandoned tank park. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal Sir Stephen Dalton revealed, during the Royal Aeronautical Society's Aerospace 2011 conference in London, that each aircraft dropped one GBU-16 paveway to 454 kg laser-guided bomb which struck very successfully and very accurately. The event represented a significant milestone in the delivery of multi-role Typhoon. Target designation was provided by the tornadoes with the Littening three targeting pods due to the lack of Typhoon pilots trained in air-to-ground missions. The National Audit Office observed in 2011 that the distribution of the Eurofighter's parts supply and repairs over several countries has led to parts shortages long time scales for repairs and the cannibalization of some aircraft to keep others flying. The UK's then Defence Secretary Liam Fox admitted on 14 April 2011 that Britain's Eurofighter Typhoon Jets were grounded in 2010 due to shortage of spare parts. The RAF has been cannibalizing aircraft for spare parts in a bid 
to keep the maximum number of typhoons operational on any given day. The Ministry of Defense had warned the problems were likely to continue until 2015. In July 2012, UK Defense Secretary Philip Hammond suggested that a follow-on buy of F-35A aircraft would be determined by the Strategic Defense and Security Review in 2015, with the aim of replacing UK's typhoons around 2030. The UK is to decide what mix of manned and unmanned aircraft to replace its Eurofighters with sometime between 2015 and 2020. It was announced in December 2013 that No. 2 Squadron will be the 5th Typhoon Squadron and will convert from the Panavia Tornado and reform at Raflossi Mouth from 1 April 2015. By July 2014 a dozen RAF Tranche 2 Typhoons had been upgraded, with Phase 1 enhancement capability to enable them to use the Paveway IV guided bomb. The Tranche 1 version had used the GBU-12 Paveway 2 in combat over Libya, but the Paveway IV can be set to explode above or beneath a target and to hit at a set angle. The British are aiming to upgrade their Typhoons to be able to carry the Storm Shadow cruise missile and Brimstone air-to-ground missile by 2018. To ensure they have manned aircraft configured with strike capabilities with trained crews. By the time the Tornado GR4 is retired the following year, the Defense Ministry is also funding research for a common launcher system that could also drop the selective precision effects at Range 3 networked precision-guided weapon from the Typhoon which is already planned for the F-35. RAF Tranche 1 Typhoons are too structurally and technically different from later models so the British have decided that beginning in 2015 or 2016 the older models will be switched out for Tranche 2 and 3 versions, a process which will remove the Tranche 1 aircraft from service around 2020 to be stripped for parts to support newer versions to lower costs. On 1 July 2015 it was reported that Typhoons from No. 2 Squadron were training with Type 45 destroyers in an air maritime integration role admitting that the service had recently neglected the role following the decommission of the RAF Nimrod Maritime Patrol aircraft. In the 2015 Strategic Defense and Security Review, it was decided to retain some of the Tranche 1 aircraft to increase the number of frontline squadrons from 5 to 7 and to boost the out-of-service date from 2030 to 2040 as well as implementing the capture AESA radar in later tranches. It was announced that Typhoons would be deployed to Malta as security for the 2015 CHOGM. Due to the limited ground attack capabilities of the RAF Typhoons in the campaign against ISIL, the UK has delayed the retirement of one squadron of tornadoes and is attempting to bring forward the deployment of brimstone missiles on the Eurofighters to 2017. On 3 December 2015 six Typhoon FGR-4S deployed to Rafakritiri to support operations against ISIL. The following evening the Typhoons accompanied by tornadoes attacked targets in Syria. In October 2016 four Royal Air Force Typhoons fighter aircraft from RAF-2 Squadron supported by a Voyager aerial tanker and AC-17 deployed to Misawa Air Base for the first bilateral exercises in Japan for the JASDF to host conducted with non-US forces. Austria On 2 July 2002 the Austrian government announced its decision to buy the Typhoon as its new air defense aircraft it having beaten the General Dynamics F-16 and the Saab Jazz 39 Gripen in competition. The purchase of 18 Typhoons was agreed on 1 July 2003 and included training, logistics, maintenance and a simulator. On 26 June 2007 Austrian Minister 
for defense Norbert Darabos announced a reduction to 15 aircraft. The first aircraft was delivered on 12 July 2007 and formally entered service in the Austrian Air Force. A 2008 report by the Austrian Government Oversight Office the Reich Nungschaff calculated that instead of getting 18 tranche 2 jets at a price of 109 million euros each as stipulated by the original contract the revised deal agreed by Minister Darabos meant that Austria was paying an increased unit price of 114 million euros for 15 partially used tranche 1 jets. Austrian prosecutors are investigating allegations that up to 100 million euros was made available to lobbyists to influence the original purchase decision in favor of the Eurofighter. By October 2013, all typhoons in service with Austria had been upgraded to the latest tranche 1 standard. In 2014, due to defense budget restrictions there were only 12 pilots available to fly the 15 aircraft in Austria's Air Force. In February 2017, Austrian Defense Minister Hans-Peter Dosgosl accused Airbus of fraudulent intent following a probe that allegedly unveiled corruption linked to the order of Typhoon jets. In July 2017, the Austria Defense Ministry announced that it would be replacing all of its Typhoon aircraft. By 2020, the ministry said that continued use of its Typhoons over their 30-year lifespan would cost about €5 billion, Euros, with the bulk being for maintenance. It estimated that buying a new fleet of 15 single-seat and three twin-seat fighters would save €2 billion Euros over that period. Austria plans to explore a government-to-government -government sale or lease agreement to avoid a lengthy and costly tender process with a manufacturer. Possible replacements include the Saab Gripen and the F-16. Saudi Arabia on 18 August 2006 it was announced that Saudi Arabia had agreed to purchase 72 typhoons. In December 2006 it was reported in The Guardian that Saudi Arabia had threatened to buy French Rafales because of a UK serious fraud office investigation into the Al Yamama defense deals which commenced in the 1980s. On 14 December 2006 Britain's Attorney General Lord Goldsmith ordered that the Serious Fraud Office discontinue its investigation into the Bay System's alleged bribery to senior Saudi officials in the Al Yamama contract citing the need to safeguard national and international security. The Times has raised the possibility that RAF production aircraft will be diverted as early Saudi Arabian aircraft with a service forced to wait for its full complement of aircraft. This arrangement would mirror the diversion of RAF tornadoes to the RSAF. The Times has also reported that such an arrangement will make the UK purchase of its tranche 3 commitments more likely. On 17 September 2007, Saudi Arabia confirmed it had signed a GB 4.43 billion pounds contract for 72 aircraft. 24 aircraft will be at the tranche 2 build standard previously destined for the UK RAF. The first being delivered in 2008. The remaining 48 aircraft were to be assembled in Saudi Arabia and delivered from 2011. But following contract renegotiations in 2011 it was agreed that all 72 aircraft would be assembled by base systems in the UK with the last 24 aircraft being built to tranche 3 capability. Saudi Arabia is considering an order of 24 additional jets in the future. More recent reports suggest that number may be as high as 60 or 72 but this may have been superseded by Saudi Arabia's decision in August 2010 to purchase 84 new F-15 SAs. On 29 September 2008 the United States Department of State approved the sale required because of a certain technology governed 
by the Atar process which was incorporated into the mids of the Eurofighter. On the 22nd of October 2008, the first typhoon in the colors of the Royal Saudi Air Force flew for the first time at Bay Systems Wharton Aerodrome marking the start of the test flight program for RSAF aircraft. Following the official handover of the first Eurofighter Typhoon to the Royal Saudi Air Force on the 11th of June 2009, the delivery ferry flight took place on the 23rd of June 2009. Since 2010, Bay Systems has been training Saudi Arabian personnel at their factory in Wharton in preparation for setting up an assembly plant in Saudi Arabia. By 2011, 24 tranche 2 Eurofighter Typhoons had been delivered to Saudi Arabia consisting of 18 single-seat and six two-seat aircraft. After that Bay and Riyadh entered into discussions over configurations and price of the rest of the 72-plane order. Deliveries resumed in early 2013, with the discussions still going on with four trainers and two more single-seat typhoons. On 19 February 2014 Bay announced that the Saudis had agreed to a price increase over the existing contract. Saudi Arabia's UK supplied Eurofighter typhoons are playing a central role in Saudi-led bombing campaign in Yemen. In February the 2015 Saudi typhoons attacked ISIS targets over Syria using Paveway IV bombs for the first time. In October 2016, it was reported that Bay Systems was in talks with Saudi Arabia about an order for another 48 aircraft. In June 2017 Bay Systems announced that the last of the 72 typhoons had been delivered to Saudi Arabia. Oman During the 2008 Farnborough Air Show it was announced that Oman was in an advanced stage of discussions towards purchasing Typhoons as a replacement for its SEPECAT Jaguar aircraft. Through 2010 Oman remained interested in ordering Typhoons, though the Saab Jazz 39 Gripen was also being considered. In the interim Oman ordered 12 additional F-16s in December 2011. On 21 December 2012, the Royal Air Force of Oman became the Typhoon's seventh customer when Bay Systems and Oman announced an order for 12 Typhoons to enter service in 2017. The first of the Typhoons ordered by Oman were according to a Bay Systems press release, formally presented to the customer on 15 May 2017. The presentation included a flypast by a Royal Air Force of Oman Typhoon, Kuwait. In June 2015 it was reported that Kuwait was in talks with the Italian Air Force and Alenia Air Mackie about the potential purchase of up to 28 Eurofighter Typhoons for two squadrons. On the 11th of September 2015 Eurofighter confirmed that an agreement had been reached to supply Kuwait with 28 aircraft. On 1 March 2016, the Kuwaiti National Assembly approved the procurement of 22 single-seat and six twin-seat typhoons which will be assembled at Kassel, Italy. On 5 April 2016, Kuwait signed a contract with Leonardo valued at 7.957 billion euros for the supply of the 28 aircraft, all to third tranche standard. The Kuwaiti aircraft will be the first typhoons to receive the CAPTA reactive electronically scanned array radar, with two instrumented production aircraft from the UK and Germany currently undergoing ground-based integration trials. The typhoons will be fitted with Leonardo's Praetorian defensive aid suite and pirate infrared search and track system. The contract involves the production of aircraft in Italy and covers logistics operational support and the training of flight crews and ground personnel. It also encompasses infrastructure work at the Ahmed Al Jaber Air Base where the Typhoons will be based. Aircraft deliveries will begin in 2019. 
potential exports. The partner companies have divided the world into regions with base selling typhoons. To the Middle East, a linear air Mackie pitching to Turkey and needs offering to Latin America, India, and South Korea. Senior Vice President of Eurofighter Sales Peter Mote has said that the Eurofighter could provide a complementary capability to stealth fighters. Bahrain. On 8 August 2013, the officials commented that the Royal Bahraini Air Force was considering buying the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Eurofighter Typhoon is being considered along with a Jazz 39 Grip and a Sioux Raffle, an F-35 Lightning II for Bahrain's future fighter needs. Belgium in July 2014 the Eurofighter Typhoon was noted to be one of the contenders to replace Belgium's fleet of aging F-16A BMLUs by 2023 as part of the Air Combat Capability Successor Program. The requirement stands for 40 aircraft. Other contenders include the Saab Gripen E, F Dassault Raffle FA-18E, F Super Hornet, and F-35A Lightning II. A decision is expected by 2016 and contracts signed by 2018. The opposition in the Federal Parliament of Belgium stated that a decision was already made in favour of the American F-35 and that the competition was a cover-up. The opposition concluded that the requirements for the new aircraft were set up such a way that only the F-35 could possibly meet the requirements. A supposedly leaked document from the Belgian military stated that for Belgium to remain in a strong position in NATO, the aircraft should have a launch capability for the B-61 nuclear bombs supposedly stored at the Kleiner Brogel Air Base in Belgium. Coalition parties have denied the allegations. They say a decision will be made in 2018, and that Parliament could still vote against the selected aircraft. On 19 April 2017, Boeing pulled out of the competition stating there is no level playing field. On 10 July 2017, Saab II announced they would no longer contend for the order, stating that the operational support expected by the Belgian government would be in violation with Swedish neutrality. On 7 September 2017 only Eurofighter and Lockheed Martin filed an official response to a request for government proposal. Dassault did not respond alleging the Belgian request deliberately favoured the F-35, and the French government instead proposed a long-term partnership for the development of a new fighter aircraft. Whether Dassault is still in the running is still unknown as of October 2017. Bulgaria in January 2015 it was revealed that the Eurofighter Typhoon is one of the contenders for Bulgaria's MiG-29 replacement program. This would consist of eight second-hand Eurofighters from ex-Italian service and is in competition with offers for 16 surplus F-16s from the United States and unknown number of surplus F-16s from Belgium or 16 surplus Saab Gripen C, Ds from Sweden, Canada. In December 2012 the Canadian government decided that F-35 costs were much higher than earlier anticipated and hence are looking at the Eurofighter as well as four other fighters to replace their aging CF-18s. In January 2014 it seemed unlikely that a decision on a replacement would be taken before the next federal election in October 2015. This election occurred, and while Canada was leaning more towards US fighters like the F-A-18E, F Super Hornet are back to the F-35 as of June 2017 protectionist rhetoric by the U.S. government has caused the Canadian government to stop discussions about acquiring the Super Hornet and look at other potentially non-U.S. options. Finland In October 2014 the Finnish broadcaster Wiley announced that the Finnish Air Force was considering 
the replacement of its aging FA-18 Hornets, thus raising the issue of whether the Eurofighter could be a potential successor. In June 2015, a working group set up by the Finnish MOD proposed starting the so-called HX fighter program to replace the Air Force's current fleet of aging FA-18 Hornet, which would reach the end of their service life by the end of the 2020s. The group recognizes five potential types, Boeing Super Hornet Dassault Raffle Eurofighter Typhoon, Lockheed Martin F-35 and Saab Jazz Gripen. The request for information concerning the HX fighter program was sent in early 2016. The five responses were received in November 2016. A call for tender will be sent in spring 2018, and the buying decision is scheduled to take place in 2021. Indonesia Eurofighter and other fighter builders responded to a request for information issued by the Indonesian government in January 2015 for a fighter to replace the aging F-5S currently in service with the Air Force. Eurofighter is offering its latest version of the Typhoon equipped with Capture AESA radar for Indonesia's F-5 replacement program. Malaysia in December 2009, Bay Systems announced plans to market the Typhoon to the Royal Malaysian Air Force to replace its aging Mikoyan MiG-29N. According to the Regional Director Business Development Dave Potter, the Typhoon's multi-role capabilities allow it to replace the MiG-29N. Other contenders include Boeing F-A-18E, F Super Hornet to Sue Raffle and Jazz 39 Gripen Ing. In October 2016 Malaysia's Minister of Defense stated that the Dassault Raffle and Eurofighter Typhoon were the only competitors to replace its MiG-29s. In 2017, it was announced that Malaysia had postponed its plan to purchase replacement multi-role combat aircraft in favor of improving its aerial reconnaissance capabilities. Peru On 4 February 2013 Spain announced a proposed sale of 18 Tranche 1 aircraft to the Peruvian Air Force at a reported value of €45 million Euros each. The intention was to transfer aircraft currently in Spanish service within a year of contract signature. Talks had been ongoing since November 2012 but the Eurofighter Typhoon is still in contention, with the Saab Gripen Ing and Sukhoi Su-30-35. Poland Poland is planning to purchase 64 multirole combat aircraft from 2021 in an update to the country's modernization plans it has been revealed. The new fighters will replace the Polish Air Force's aging fleet of Sukhoi Su-22M4, Fitter K, ground attack aircraft and Mikoyan MiG-29, Fulcrum A, fighter aircraft. Planned open tender procedure could include the F-35 Lightning II Jazz-39 Gripen E, F the newest variants of Eurofighter Typhoon and Dassault Raffle, and the Boeing F-A-18E, F Super Hornet. Qatar On 17 September 2017 the UK government announced that Qatar has signed a statement of intent to procure 24 Eurofighter Typhoons. Serbia in 2010 the government of Serbia displayed open interest in the Eurofighter and competing products. In June 2013, Defense Minister Aleksandr Vucic suggested that Serbia might purchase six MiG-29M-M2 instead. Vietnam In June 2015 it was reported that Vietnam had been in discussions about the purchase of Eurofighter Typhoons to replace MiG-21s in their aircraft inventory. The talks were reported as ongoing but no decision was expected soon. 
Saab's Gripeni, and Sukhwa Su-57 were also involved in the discussions for Vietnam's next fighter requirement. Denmark The Royal Danish Air Force is replacing its aging fleet of F-16AM and F-16BMs. Besides Eurofighter Typhoon there were two other competitors Stur Boeing F, Ye 18 F Super Hornet, and the F-35 Lightning II. Denmark is a level 3 partner in the Joint Strike Fighter program, and has already invested $200 million. On 12 May 2016 the Danish minority government recommended that 27 F-35A fighters instead of 34 typhoons should be procured. On 9 June the Danish parliament selected the joint strike fighter. Greece In 1999 the Greek government agreed to acquire 20 typhoons to replace its existing second-generation combat aircraft. The purchase was put on hold due to budget constraints largely driven by other development programs and the need to cover the cost of the 2004 Summer Olympics. In June 2006 the government announced a €22 billion Euros multi-year acquisition plan intended to provide the necessary budgetary framework to enable the purchase of a next-generation fighter. Over the next 10 years and the typhoon was under consideration to fill this requirement. In December 2011 it was announced that the Eurofighter Consortium office in Greece was to close, because Greece would not be in a position to order any new aircraft before 2018 or 2020. India Eurofighter was one of the six aircraft competing for the Indian MRCA competition for 126 multi-role fighters. In April 2011 the Indian Air Force shortlisted the Dassault Rafale, an Eurofighter Typhoon for the $10.4 billion contract. On 31 January 2012, the IAF announced the Rafale as the preferred bidder in the competition. Japan In March 2007 Jane's Information Group reported that the Typhoon was the favorite to win the contest for Japan's next-generation fighter requirement. The other competitors then were the F-A-18E, F Super Hornet, and McDonnell Douglas F-15E Strike Eagle. On 17 October 2007, Japanese Defense Minister Shigeru Ishiba confirmed that Japan may buy the Typhoon. Although the F-22 Raptor was in his words exceptional, it was not absolutely necessary for Japan. And the Typhoon was the best alternative. The F-22 is currently unavailable for export per U.S. law. During a visit to Japan in June 2009, Andy Latham of Bay pointed out that while F-22 exports were restricted to keep advanced military technology from falling into the wrong hands. Selling the Typhoon would take a no-black-box approach that is that even license production and integration with Japanese equipment would not carry the risk of leakage of restricted military technology. In July 2010, it was reported that the Japan Air Self-Defense Force favored acquiring the F-35 ahead of the Typhoon and the F-A-18E, F to fulfill its FX requirement due to its stealth characteristics. But the Defense Ministry was delaying its budget request to evaluate when the F-35 would be produced and delivered. David Howell of the UK Foreign Office has suggested that Japan could partner with Britain in the continuing development of the Eurofighter. On 20 December 2011, the Japanese government announced its intention to purchase 42 F-35s. The purchase decision was influenced by the F-35's stealth characteristics, with the Defense Minister Yasuo Ichikawa saying there are changes in the security environment and the actions of various nations and we want to have a fighter that has the capacity to cope. Norway Norway considered purchasing the Eurofighter. 
but in 2012 signed the largest public procurement project in the country's history for the F-35A. Qatar From January 2011 the Qatar Air Force evaluated the Typhoon. Alongside the Boeing F-A-18E, F Super Hornet, the McDonnell Douglas F-15E Strike Eagle, the Dassault Rafale and the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, to replace its then inventory of Dassault Mirage 2005S. By June 2014, Dassault claimed it was close to signing a contract with Qatar for 72 Rafales. On 30 April 2015, Sheikh Tamman bin Hamad Al Thani announced to President François Hollande that Qatar will order 24 Rafale with an option to buy 12 more aircraft in a deal worth 6.3 billion euros. Singapore In 2005 the Eurofighter was a contender for Singapore's next-generation fighter requirement competing with the Boeing F-15SG and the Dassault Rafale. The Eurofighter was eliminated from the competition in June 2005 and the F-15SG was selected in September 2005. South Korea In 2002 the Republic of Korea Air Force chose the F-15K Slam Eagle over the Dassault Rafale, Eurofighter Typhoon and Sukhoi Su-35 for its 40 aircraft FX Phase 1 fighter competition. During 2012-13 the Typhoon competed with the Boeing F-15SE Silent Eagle and the F-35 for the ROKAF's FX Phase 3 fighter competition. In August 2013 it was announced that the F-15SE was the only remaining candidate. However the award was cancelled and in November 2013, it was announced that the ROKAF will purchase 40 F-35 AS. Switzerland. In February 2007 it was reported that Switzerland was considering the Eurofighter the Raffle and the Saab Jazz 39 Gripen to replace its Northrop F-5 Tiger IIs. A one-month valuation started in October 2008 at M&Air Force Base consisting of approximately 30 evaluation flights. On 30 November 2011 the Swiss Federal Council announced that it was planning to buy 22 Gripen NGs due to its lower acquisition and maintenance costs. A leaked Swiss Air Force evaluation report revealed that the Raffle won the competition on technical grounds and Dassault offered to lower the price for 18 Rafales. Turkey Turkey was considering a purchase of Eurofighter but in 2009 it decided to purchase a larger number of F-35s and it has subsequently stated that Eurofighter is off Turkey's agenda. United Arab Emirates In November 2012 the UK government announced the formation of a formal defence and industrial partnership with the United Arab Emirates paving the way for potential typhoon sales with base systems. On 19 December 2013 it was announced that UAE had decided not to proceed with the deal for the supply of defense and security services including the supply of Typhoon aircraft. Analysts estimated that the break-off was due to the producing nation's lack of commitment for radar upgrades. Variants The Eurofighter is produced in single-seat and twin-seat variants. The twin-seat variant is not used operationally but only for training though it is combat-capable. The aircraft has been manufactured in three major standards, seven development aircraft, seven production standard instrumented production aircraft for further system development, and a continuing number of series production aircraft. The production aircraft are now operational, with the partner nation's air forces. The Tranche 1 aircraft were produced from 2000 onwards. Aircraft capabilities are being increased incrementally, with each software upgrade resulting in a different standard known as blocks.
With the introduction of the Block 5 standard the R2 retrofit program began to bring all Tranche 1 aircraft to that standard. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?